What's up everybody? Today we're going to be speaking about our engagement story. I'm going to be speaking about why it is that I proposed without a ring, Kelly's reaction to that. Uh, we're going to be speaking about why 12 hours beforehand I was in total panic and having to call up one of my friends to get some support. You're going to hear all about that. Uh, I'm going to be, we're going to be speaking about the conversations that we had after the proposal. And I think anyone who wants to get engaged, anyone who's curious about, you know, maybe the next phase of commitment for their relationship or maybe doesn't know how to have conversations about wanting to get married with a resistant partner, this is going to be a great episode for you. To start off this story, I want to rewind you to six weeks before me getting down on one knee. Because six weeks beforehand, I was planning all of these different ideas, the, the dates, the location, how I was going to surprise Kelly. And I came up with an idea that was super simple, easy to execute, and was going to have her friends involved as well. So the idea was to reach out to one of Kelly's really close friends, her name's Julia, and set up a fake photo shoot. And the reason why is because Julio, Kelly's friend, has this clothing brand that she's about to launch. And I thought that it was gonna be believable for Kelly to think that, oh, I'm going to do a photo shoot to support one of my friends because she's about to launch a clothing brand. Mm -hmm. So I thought that it was something that was gonna surprise her. She was going to believe it. And uh, it was simple to set up. So I reached out to Julia. She was so in, so excited to be part of this. Then she reached out to some of her other friends. And what did she do? She set up a little group chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she asked me one day and and yeah, it totally made sense. You know, I knew that a photo shoot was coming for her brand. So I was like, great, you know, put us in a group chat with a couple other friends and we were she was just sending us logistics and dates and all the rest. It seemed totally normal to me. Yes. <laughs> so the date was set, the idea was set. Now, uh, and before that as well, I also found this amazing villa. I'll show you right now if you're on, watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, uh, it was this amazing white themed uh, villa, three bedroom. It was very spacious, had an upstairs area. And I went over to this villa to before booking it. And I was just planning in my mind how it was that I was gonna set everything up. And it was just perfect. So that happened. So that was all set now. So now I wanna fast forward you to 12 hours before the proposal. Because 12 hours beforehand, I was practicing what it was that I was going to say before getting down on one knee. So I was in this exact room, going over what I wanted to say, pretending that I'm speaking to Kelly. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I haven't actually practiced with the ring yet. I haven't actually got down on one knee. I've been practicing what I'm gonna say, but haven't got down on one knee. So I went to the place that I hid the rings. It was behind everything in my closet, in my drawer, and it was really far in the back, in the corner, and really hard to, to see, right? Because I didn't want Kelly to find it. I didn't want anyone else to find it as well. So I grabbed two ring boxes. One ring box had the uh, the wedding band and then the other ring box had the engagement ring. So I got two boxes out, put it in this exact place here on this table that we're recording this podcast and I opened up the first box and saw the wedding band and I was like, awesome. Opened up the second box and that's when my heart sank and I went into total panic. And the reason why was because there was no ring in the ring box. And I went into total panic I was ripping apart everything in the drawer, just like trying to find, did I drop it somewhere? Did something happen to it? Like, did, like what happened to the ring? I called up one of my close friends, Alex, and he was really supporting me through everything and just like really helping me to ground and regulate myself because I was just in anger and shock and just panic because in 12 hours at that time, I was going to be down on one knee, but I had no ring there. So- Can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. What did you think happened to it? I immediately thought someone stole it because I knew that I wouldn't have taken it out and like put it somewhere else. I just know I wouldn't have done that. So immediately I went into who stole the ring. The last thing that I'll share about this before speaking about the date of the proposal was I said to Kelly that I'm going to go away uh, with one of my friends on a little trip. So then that way, on that day of the proposal, the next day, she was gonna think that I was with someone else. I was with one of my friends, just relaxing. So now to fast forward you to the day of the proposal, um, I went over to the villa super early, got everything set up. I hired like this, this company that helped create and put up this massive sign, say, uh, marry me. I had the photographers come over, I had a videographer come over. And there were a lot of challenges that led up to Kelly arriving at like, was it 3 p.m., 4 p.m.? Mm, 4. 4.30. 4 p.m. 4.30 mm -hmm. p.m. So before that, before 4.30 p.m., it was about 3.30 p.m. And so many challenges 
happens. So I was getting ready and I was like, holy shit, I forgot my damn socks. Right? <laughs> and I didn't want to get down on one knee without socks wearing shoes. It'd just be weird. So I had to like get someone else to go and get me socks while I was getting ready. And then I went outside and there was all of this smoke blowing in the direction of the marry me sign. So now with all the photos that I wanted to have done, it was like super, because in Bali they, they burn a lot of the rice fields here. So there was just all of this smoke everywhere. And I was like, this is, I have no ring. I have no socks right now. Now there is all of this smoke that's happening. And I was just panicking even more, right? Aww. So then I went upstairs and I was just like getting ready. It was about 4.15 p.m. I was looking at our security cameras here and I saw you. <laughs> Did I tell you about that? Yeah, you told Oh, yeah. Me. I was looking at security cameras. I already timed like how long it would take from to Kelly get to from our house to the villa. Saw that she left and I was like, okay, everyone getting ready. Photographers were like getting ready. And um, I was sweating. So, I was so nervous. It was also really hot. Yeah, it was very, very hot. <laughs> Luckily, the smoke went away. Got the socks. Have to tell you about that. Um, so now I was ready. I was all set up. Right. So now before me speaking about getting down on one knee, what was your experience like arriving? Like, what did you think was happening? And OK, so that day I yeah, I thought I was going to the photo shoot. I thought you were going away for the weekend. You had left. You texted me a, a photo of the villa you were at and yes. you were like in a totally different place, you know, obviously in a different you know city far away. So I was like, great, I'm going to have a relaxed weekend. I'm going to go to this photo shoot, then, you know, hang out with the cats tonight. You know, I just had my idea of what the weekend would look like and um and actually i didn't even want to go to the photo shoot partly i mean i was so excited to go for my friend but i also wasn't feeling that well that day like i wasn't feeling terrible but i was like oh i'm feeling not well enough that i could probably get out of this yeah. so i considered canceling and then i was like no i want to go i was feeling a bit better so then um yeah hopped on my bike got ready and my friend was really adamant that we wear all white and that we show up in all white because we needed to start the, sh the photos right away he was like you know told me how told us how to do our hair she's like okay beach waves light makeup all white <laughs> so so I, yeah i left and i had these uh you can see the photos we'll share the photos but i had these little like white pants on i had this little white you know crop top on and um and i hopped on my bike and when i arrived there i uh yeah it was strange because I, I walked into the house and none of my friends were there. And I got there, you know, like a couple minutes before 4.30 and she was also like very much, we need to be on time. And so I checked my phone and uh, you know, they were saying they were running late, gonna be there in a couple minutes. <laughs> this is the group chat with my friends for the photo shoot. <clears throat> and anyways, I see the photographer there and I know him. So, you know, I was just saying hi to him. And I was like, how is no one here? This is crazy. And anyways, he was like, yeah, it's okay. You know, take a seat. Um, do you need anything? We'll just start in a few minutes. And I was like, no, I'm good. And he was like, okay, I have a surprise. And I was like, a surprise? You know, like it was strange for him to have said that. And I was like, what do you mean a surprise? Like a surprise for me, a surprise for everyone. What are you talking about? And he's like, it's for you. It's for everyone. You'll see. Like he was just like a little nervous and weird when he answered. But he, but, but but I don't know. It wasn't fully out of character. Like this photographer, we love him. He's always so excited. He's always like, we you know, we always hire him for photography because he's like, every time he's photo shooting us, he's like, oh my God, I have chills. This is beautiful. I love this. So like him also saying that there was a surprise upstairs it was weird but it wasn't like Out insane yes. you know I was like maybe Harry did plan something upstairs and, and who knows and then my friend had also texted the group chat and she said Harry has a surprise planned for us I don't know what it is but you know Kelly will you go check it out so they were fully in on all of it and then you know the photographer walks away he says you know wait on the couch for a minute I'm sitting by myself and all of a sudden I just get this you know rush of adrenaline and nerves because I'm like thinking in my head is Matt gonna propose is this a proposal like is this all just a big setup for Matt to propose and so I was putting together all the clues in my head I was even looking around the villa and I was like wait this doesn't look like a villa that Julia would rent this looks like a villa that Matt would rent because it's so modern and it's just very much your style whereas it's not Julia Julia's would rent like a, a little bohemian like shack in the forest you know <laughs> and so all these little clues I was putting together in my head but then I thought to myself okay I don't want to expect Matt to be proposing because I've known that this was coming for a few months and I've really during those months was like 
like working on not expecting you to propose because there were a couple times I subtly thought you might mm -hmm. and it always was like a bit disappointing you know not not fully but I was just like it's such a peak experience obviously to be proposed to so obviously anything less than that was it was like oh in the past so I was like okay I don't want to expect you to propose maybe Harry just is planning a surprise so anyways, I kind of calm my nerves and then uh, a staff member comes and he's like, okay, I'm going to show you upstairs. So I get up and all of a sudden I'm so nervous again. <laughs> I'm like, this is so weird, you know, like, what's happening? And so then, you know, he takes me outside walking up the, the stairs. The stairs are like lined in flowers. So it's all really beautiful. And the upstairs is like this outdoor rooftop and um, we're like surrounded by rice paddies just to kind of set the scene. So I'm walking up the stairs, I turn the corner and I look to my right and I see Matt standing there with the big marry me sign behind him <laughs> and the photographer, videographer and just this gorgeous view. And I was just so, yeah, just so shocked, so excited, so happy. And um, yeah, I felt nervous. I felt like, ah, like yeah. so much attention, you know, yeah. like on me in this moment. Like, do I look okay? Also, I walked upstairs. I had my hair in a braid because all like, I braid my hair when I, because the, the, the villa was pretty far from ours. Like it was like a 30 minute drive. So anyways, I had my hair in a braid and so it doesn't get messed up in the wind. And my hair was still in a braid. So when I see you, one of my first thoughts is like, do I take my hair out? my braid do I leave it like <laughs> and then I was like okay no I'm just gonna leave it I just want to be present this moment isn't about my hair <laughs> yes. it's about this really special moment in our relationship so um yeah do you want to explain how that was for you yeah for sure so when I saw Kelly walk up we'll show some photos we'll show the video in a second as well for those of you watching this and if you're listening you'll be able to hear what I say but yeah, when I saw you, I was so still very, very nervous. And like when you walked towards me, there was this heart that the mm. staff who was like supporting me with everything set up. So I was sitting in the big heart and then she walked over. It was like a heart made of rose petals. Yes. Yeah, so you're standing inside of it. Yeah. With the big sign behind it. Yes. And then I grabbed her hands and now you're about to listen or watch to everything that took place after that. What I want to say first is there was a moment when we were in Uber two years ago and we're sitting on a hammock and you're wrapping Biggie Smalls. <laughs> and I remember looking at you and just thinking that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Mm. And I remember when we went to the Loving Men's workshop and I remember I said it to you for the first time that I see you as a life partner. And there hasn't been a moment since where I've had any doubt that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And I want to grow old with you. I want to have a family with you. Maybe some more fur balls. <laughs> Which is why I also want to ask. Oh my God. <laughs> Kelly Bowie. Will you marry me? Yes. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you so much, babe. was that that's what happened that's what I said that's how uh, the whole thing looked and sounded and as you probably heard you heard me say don't worry about that don't worry about that <laughs> and that was because in my mind I thought that she wasn't gonna see the ring because beforehand uh, the day of I was watching all these YouTube videos and looking at people proposing and I wanted to see how many like how often do women actually look down at the ring and it was like 90% of the women who got proposed to didn't look at 
at the ring. So I was like, I'm gonna be fine. She's not gonna notice. It's gonna be okay. And then getting down on one knee, she immediately looks down at the ring and I was like, shit. So that's why I had to say, don't worry about that. And then, you know, she laughed and then afterwards, of course the question was like, what happened to the ring? What happened to the ring? Because I looked down and I see the wedding band. And I was like, wait, what? And then that's when you said, don't worry about that. That was just before you, I said yes. yes. And um, yeah, at first I was like, wait, did he bring the wrong ring? And then I was like, wait, what happened to the ring? Obviously a lot of questions in my mind. Uh -huh. um, and then, so of course I looked right at the ring. Yes. I was so excited about the ring. So yes. I was like, ah, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so then I obviously explained everything that happened. And she was, what was your reaction to when I said that? I felt sad and shocked surprised and I felt really yeah I think like disappointed in a way yeah just and upset at the person who took it that I had like taken it away from that moment for us yes. and then I felt really violated because I was like who had done that and then of course it was in my head of like who could it be like going into like investigative work yeah. So, um, and I was so happy in the moment and like so excited to be engaged. So it was like, and there was that like background of like, you know, playing in the back of my head a little bit of like what happened and who took it and uh, you know, yes. so it was both. And I think that some of you might be thinking like, how does she know what the ring looked like? And the reason why is because she picked the ring for those of you who haven't been following the whole story behind mm -hmm. hand, yeah. behind it all. Um, we'll speak about that later on, but that was that. So we, um, well, I like message so many people who have been in our home. So in Bali, we are fortunate enough to have cleaners that come over and we had our house deep cleaned. I had some al really terrible allergy challenges and we had a house deep cleaned. We had multiple people come in our house and um, we also got it sprayed got for it mosquitoes. Sprayed, so we had a bunch mosquitoes. of mosquitoes. There's so many mosquitoes in Bali and we had a ton in our house. Yeah. So we had a lot of people that came into our home and it was challenging for me to message all of these people without accusing them. Right. But because I was so triggered in that moment, I definitely upset a lot of people just with the way that I was communicating. Um, mm, the night before. The, the night before. Well. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like straight away after my friend Alex supported me, I was like messaging all of these people. And I was still very much in a high end emotion because I, and that urgency was there. So mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of people that got upset. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> wasn't communicating the best in that moment. So we don't know who took the ring. We still haven't found it. We don't know where it is but we will share uh, our plans moving forward um, around that mm -hmm. and before we go into that though uh, let's talk about what happens after after the proposal yes so after the proposal matt had said that he planned a dinner for us so uh yeah we you know he proposed and then we had some time to just hang out and talk and we you made these delicious mocktails for us and um, we got some more photos and videos taken and we took some ourselves as well so we hung out at the house for a while and then we hopped on your bike went to dinner and we went to uh, one of our favorite places and it's actually the uh, first restaurant we went to after we were in a relationship mm -hmm. so after we decided to be you know boyfriend and girlfriend we went this is the first date we went on and so it was really special that this was the you know, restaurant that we went back to. And so I figured that we were just having like a normal dinner. I don't know in my head, I was just imagining kind of like a normal a normal dinner there, but we showed up and they led us to this table right next to the ocean, surrounded by candles, just like off to the side on our own. And then they give us the menu and it's like a four course vegan menu. <laughs> it was so special and really sweet and it's so fun to be surprised again. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was our first date as fiancés yes right so um that was really special and we just had an amazing conversation around like what is it that we're stepping into because a lot of engagements and marriages it's like the highlight or on the pet it's the ring that's on the pedestal or the wedding that's on the pedestal and all those things are very special and beautiful and mm -hmm. it's what does this ring symbolize like what is it that we're stepping into what is it that we're letting go of and that was the question that we spoke about, that we answered. It's like, okay, this ring not being here, what is the opportunity here? Like, what is the blessing? I can't remember the exact question, but mm -hmm. it was something along those lines. And we just talked about what are we moving into? What are we letting go of um, within ourselves that we get to bring into this relationship? And it was a beautiful conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was really great to, to talk about a little bit. Um, I mean, we've talked about it so much leading up to this, for sure. You know, what does this engagement mean to us? What are we stepping into? And just being on the day of, of course, it was like even more of a special conversation 
to to talk about like what we envisioned and and yeah I loved that you brought us back to because obviously you had more time to process about the ring mm. than me so then you just brought us back to um yeah how is this happening for us you know how can we see this as a gift and what do we get to focus on now that we don't have the ring you know and yeah of course it sucks and then like what's the opportunity here which I really love you yes. know that we do always bring ourselves back to that and you know, are in the practice of focusing on that, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And it's been beautiful around, like, even after that, you know, we've had some conversations recently about, okay, here we are, we're getting engaged, we are engaged, we're getting married. Like, what is it, what are are the philosophies that we want to have in our marriage? What are the philosophies that we want to have, you know, around money coming together as well, like playing more, even more as a team, bringing our finances together. So what are some principles that we're gonna live by? What are some principles when we are parents, right? Like what are the philosophies that we're going to live by? And I think that that's beautiful. Like yes, you can have that in a relationship for sure. And it's like a deeper level of commitment and conversations that have had as we have stepped into this deeper level of commitment through being engaged now. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's been beautiful. Mm. Yeah, and a lot of people have asked me the question of, does it feel different to be engaged? So for me, it does. Yeah, I think um, we've, like you said, just stepped into having like a different level of conversations about all this stuff because it feels closer than before. You know, we talked about it, but it was kind of more in like the distant future. And now it's like, wow, okay, we're really planning a wedding. We're really planning a marriage. We really. Um, you know, are planning what it's going to be like to have kids. So it's like this whole new level of excitement and commitment and, um, yeah, togetherness, this yes. feeling of being a team. Team. Mm. That's how I would describe it. So that's that. Now we can talk about our plans for the wedding. And also, for those of you who don't know, we'll talk about the conversations that we had that led up to that moment. And then mm. we can end it there. So mm. plans for the wedding. Plans for the wedding. Yes. So we're going to get married in Bali. Yep. We've considered many other places, but it makes the most sense. We've had yes. our, we have our friends here. And, you know, your family's in Australia. Mine's in the U.S. So it makes sense. I mean, just that both of them mm-hmm. will travel and come come be here. Those who can. Like, we know that not all of our family's going to probably be able to come. Um, So we'll probably also have parties, like a party in the U.S., a party in Australia, just to celebrate with more extended family. Yes. But as far as the wedding, yeah, we're we're looking at venues, talking to a wedding planner. We're thinking next year, 2024, in in, we'll see, April. April, May. May. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be, I I think in some ways, like traditional, you know, like I think we just want to have like ceremony, dinner, dancing. Yeah. And before that, we'll probably have like a sister circle or brother circle or however you want to do that and yeah, like lead up to it in some special ways too. The last thing that we want to speak about is what are our plans for getting the ring? I have already booked, uh, booked. I've already bought the same ring, um, this time with insurance. And (laughs) we are going to New Zealand in a few months uh, for my birthday, just having a little getaway. And we're getting the ring shipped over to New Zealand. We're gonna pick it up there. So in two months, you will have the ring. A little less. No, yes, a a month and a half. A month and a half. A little less than a month and a half. Yeah. I'm so excited to have the ring. I cannot wait to wear it. Yes. But I just get to want it Uh even more. So if you are following us on Instagram, I'm sure he will see it then. Oh, 100%. Yes. He'll be like in every video. They're just like, oh my God. (laughs) So like. These are the five steps to having the life that you want. (laughs) <laughs> yes so that's it i really hope that you have enjoyed this podcast or this video let us know what was your biggest takeaway or let us know what you got from this we would love to hear whether it be in the comments down below whether it be can't comment on podcasts or just like po- posting on your story sending us mm-hmm. a message yes. we would love to hear and thank you for listening thanks for listening bye guys <laughs>